fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction, he's got rhythm, he's got both of them. Maloney! Oh, oh he's taken Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God! Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness, half the field's going to get rolled. Six is very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what? This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to round number of 11 of the Aussie Driver Search iRacing V8 Supercars Official Series here on the iRacing Esports Network, proudly presented this evening by SimSpeed TV. As I said, we are here at Circuit Jaws Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada, where uh, it's going to be a very, once again, talented start field and we have many drivers who saw the track yesterday the first round of v8 scops which was at this track 250 kilom kilometer race uh which saw just tons of fantastic racing um but also uh quite a lot of tragedy for many of the main championship contenders or people who we would expect to be championship contenders but tonight is a brand new night it's a completely different series and uh, it's going to be a night of fantastic racing as we have not been disappointed a single Monday night so far. Joining me up in the commentary booth this evening is Cameron Dance and bring us these beautiful pictures from uh, beautiful Montreal, Canada is Jay Kennedy in the director's booth as we're having a nice overhead shot looking down into the hairpin there. Unfortunately, no cars coming in there at the moment, but we do expect to see some action there later. So we're now having a look at Jack Boyd just sliding his way through the final chicane at this track and uh, coming across the line for a 135.6, which will put him up into 12th position. But Cameron, we saw a very interesting race yesterday in the Scops, uh, in the Scops strength of field split one. And uh, a big talking point of that night was uh, slowdowns here at Montreal. Yeah, absolutely. It was a very chaotic race and numerous occasions last night so and like you said slowdowns is one of the big talking points at Montreal it's very very easy to be a little bit too eager and aggressive over the curves through the chicanes and just putting your wheels a little bit just an inch or so too far over you get quite a hefty slowdown so you want to try and minimize that to obviously not lose too many positions and obviously not lose too much time yeah, absolutely. I was uh, one of the many drivers who failed to qualify for the Scops field on the weekend and uh, put in a fair few laps. And I have to say myself that I feel that uh, the iRacing could probably tone back some of the slowdowns on this track for the V8. But uh, that's only because these cars love the curbs so much and it just doesn't quite feel right taking that chicane in such a... Uh, in such a I guess, undramatic fashion. Luke Page taking a little bit of drama to the track, though, getting up on two wheels as he came through that final chicane, unfortunately for him. Not able to go higher than 23rd position at the moment. We do have uh, some very tight uh, times up the top of the field at the moment. It's uh, Logitech G Altus Esports 1 and 2 with Dane Warren and Sam Blacklock. Brett Loxton tucked in with Jake Burton very closely behind them. James Mackey... Coming across the line now in the CMR team car. He's currently 15th. And uh, that time, unfortunately for him, just a couple of hundred slower than his previous lap and not able to improve. Andrew Gilliam, a man who has been impressing us the last few rounds in his Pursuit Sim Sports car, coming through that very, very difficult section of track 
in this V8 supercar. It's so difficult to get the traction down. And uh, he's just out there to gain a little bit of track knowledge for the beginning of this race, which will start very shortly. And the man who will be looking down into turn one ahead of everybody else is Mr. Dane Warren. He'll be joined alongside teammate Sam Blacklock, both in the Logitech G Altus Esports cars. Brett Loxton in the KRF Motorsports machine will light, line up alongside Jake Burton in fourth position. Brady Myers for TTL Esports in fifth, alongside Ethan Warren in the Astro Gaming Altus Esports car. Marlon McMullen for CMR team, the first one of uh, his team up on the grid. Cooper Webster for Evolution Racing Team, who had a good outing yesterday, starting in eighth. Jackson Suslan Harlow up there for TTL Esports, and James Scott will round out the top 10. Back just outside the top 10, we've got Chris Cox here, followed by Jack Boyd in 12th, 13th, 14th. Andrew Gilliam and Luke Harvey, followed by James McKee and Corey Preston, 15th, 16th, respectively. 17th and 18th to Scott Soslowski and Michael Taliansic. And then rounding out the top 20 is Brian Borg and Greg Sharp. And to take us through the rest of this 31 vehicle field this evening, James Duckworth starting from 21st position. Good to see Thomas Hins up in 22nd. Luke Page in 23rd. Damian Johnston will start from 24th position. Mitchell McLeod always fighting through the strength of field fields in uh, 25th position. He'll be making up a few positions. Tyson Williams will start from 26th. Zach Baker in 27th. Job Stewart, Tyler Blackburn, Christian Smart, and Mario Vlasic, the uh, only one of our drivers not able to set a time this evening. And uh, we are expecting a 31 lap race here this evening. We will require one stop. Now, I think these cars use about four liters per lap. Uh, so we can expect cars coming in as early as possibly lap 10 and as late as around lap 20 to 21. Fairly cool track temperature as well. So tire wear will not be as much of an issue uh, for some of these drivers who are maybe a little less kind on their rear tires as they struggle to put down the 600 odd horsepower in these V8 supercars. Looking now at Dane Warren, who waits a wiggle eagerly for the starters' orders. The revs are rising, and he is away. The green flag has dropped, and a good start from both the Logitech GL to C Sports cars there. Ethan Warren as well in the Astro Gaming L to C Sports car, getting a good start as he tries to work his way up onto the back and go down the inside into turn number two there. Going to get squeezed a little bit as cars go two by two. And that's a car round in the background. Hard to see who that was there. I think that was that uh, was KRF engineer Luke Page who started 23rd. So not a good start for Luke as uh, they make their way through the first part of this track. Cooper Webster there going side by side as they come down into turn number four or five. And he's just going to make that work going to be a drag race now as they come down into the chicane under the bridge. Cooper Webster just getting cut off there by Marlon McMullen as he doesn't want to uh, give up his track position at this point in time. Already losing a bit of a gap though, this little squabble. And uh, they're going to have to sort themselves out pretty quickly. Big train starting to form now behind Marlon McMullen as he fights with Cooper Webster here. But Dane Warren, man out front at the moment. I think that was two by two as they come into the hairpin. And it looks like Jackson Susan Harlow might try and get in on the action as well. Doesn't quite have the traction coming out of that corner and has to tuck back in behind Hooper Webster. But James Scott having a little bit of a look behind as well. Is, uh, he's searching for a bit of room there. And that's a TTR car. Uh, oh, sorry, pardon me. That's Corey Preston in the JMSR racing car. And he's going side by side with Luke Gilliam who looked to cut quite a lot of the inside curb there. At the first part of that chicane, Corey Preston running out of room on the exit of that corner, but a pretty good start from these guys. They're obviously well in practice. That's a slow car down the straight, though. And I think that's Mitchell McLeod in the talking entry who's gotten a slow down there. But uh, by that, very good start from all 31 cars here. Yes, so far, everybody's managed to get through pretty cleanly. That top six group has broken away quite a bit from the rest of the field, which consists of... McMullen, Webster, Susan Harder and the rest of them, it's pretty much all on for the top six at the moment. But that battle pack, like we were talking about earlier with McMullen, Webster, Susan Harder and James Scott as well, 
it's going to be interesting, but Job Stewart is around in, I believe, the second chicane. As we're going to get a quick Motum Simulations replay as well. Yeah, very unfortunate for Job there. Having a battle there with uh, Zach Baker. And so they're coming down very uh, difficult section of the track. Down the inside there nicely. Ran a little bit wide as he was coming through that corner and uh, oh, had to check up a couple of cars there. But uh, looks like he uh, ran out of racing room there playing with Zach Baker and uh, ultimately paid the consequence. Unfortunate for him. Now got a lot of work to do from the back of the field. Cooper Webster's had something happen to him as well because uh, he's sitting well down the order. He was up fighting with uh, Marlon McMullen and he is now uh, back in 15th position uh, around Mark Taliantic. So he must have had a slowdown. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did actually get a slowdown in the second chicane, or third chicane, sorry, as he's going to go up the inside for a move at the moment. Like, but yeah, he looked to just take a little bit too much coop for that third chicane. It's cost him quite a bit, unfortunately. He's dropped down the order, but with the pace he's got, he shouldn't have too much trouble catching back up to that pack he was in. Yeah, we just got a modem simulation replay of that incident for Cooper Webster just taking a little bit of the entry curb too aggressively as he's now going for a move on Michael Taliancic who defends very heavily. Doesn't want to let that ERT machine by at all, but uh, looks like it's going to be pretty inevitable. As you said, Cameron, Cooper Webster showing some fantastic pace in that car at the moment. He's now having a little bit of a look around Michael as they come into that second chicane and Cooper Webster doesn't seem too deterred by the fact that he got a slow down the last time round. He's still taking a, a good, healthy amount of the inside curb. Meanwhile, another driver who impressed Scott Slavowski looking behind at the battle up ahead, and he might just have something to do with this. Michael Taliantis watching the inside mirror and just cutting a, a little close for comfort there for Scott Slavowski. He probably had to back out of that a little bit. But Cooper Webster very tight, got the job done, and uh, now looks up the road to Luke Harvey in the ace tennis machine. Just looking up at the front of uh, the field now, and Jake Burton still hot on the heels of Sam Blacklock up the front of the field in third position, but he's got Brett Loxton in the uh, KRF Motorsports entry sitting just behind him. And Brett Loxton was looking very racy yesterday, qualified second in the Scops race and uh, showed some extremely good pace throughout that race. So we'll have to see if uh, he's able to turn a little more car speed onto the track tonight and uh, get past that car of Jake Burton who is uh, following him very closely at the moment. And uh, didn't actually talk much about the uh, championship standings coming into this camera and we didn't, uh, didn't have an opportunity to, but um, Dane Warren currently leading this championship Ahead of Brady Myers and Marlon McMullen, so um, Marlon McMullen really has quite a big uh, gap at the moment. Six places down on his championship rival Dane Warren, and uh, seven seconds behind on the road. So he's got a little bit of work to do. And uh, Brady Myers also sitting down there in fifth position. So it's very much on for the championship at the moment. There is only 50 points separating those three aforementioned drivers um, and they are all currently running within the top 10 at the moment so championship very healthy after seven rounds at the moment but uh, Brady Myers and Marlon McMullen are really going to have to pick up their game if they're going to try and catch Dane Warren at the moment he's looking very strong at the front of this field as uh, Brett Loxton continues to apply pressure to Jake Burton here. Yeah, absolutely. That championship battle was actually very close and with about 233 points up for grabs on for the win tonight with a strength field of 378, uh, 3,785 as so I struggle to English there. But um, yeah, there's quite a bit of points on offer and looking at where Brady and Marlon are both are, that's going to cost them massively in the championship, especially getting into the last round next week. Yeah, and... Uh you're absolutely right. There is not much time left in this championship and not much in it at all. So all these drivers really need to be at the top of their game. And they are driving very well at the moment. Obviously, as we said, 
Everyone in extremely good practice from yesterday's race. I honestly can only see possibly one or two names in this field uh, that I did not see racing yesterday. So everyone uh, is kind of here for a bit of a round two. A lot of, uh, a lot of moves were put on yesterday and a lot of cards were dealt out. So people are going to be more wary of some of these uh, possible attacks, but really does seem like the hairpin is one of the strongest places to get a move done without a mistake. And all these drivers driving within such fine limits at the moment does only take one minor incorrect application of the throttle just moving over to the track a centimeter too wide just catching a little bit of grass or even just pinching a brake especially a rear brake in one of these v supercars can uh, lose you a couple of ten all these drivers though keeping it well within their limits at the moment sam blacklock starting to fall away from his teammate at the moment and just falling into the clutches clutches of Jake Burton ever so gingerly in the last couple of laps, but Burton does seem to be picking up the pace a little bit, possibly with that uh, a pressure that is being applied from behind of Brett Loxton. As we said, we saw good pace from both those guys yesterday. Sam probably had a race that he would rather forget, looking for a bit of redemption here, but he's going to have to pick up some more pace in that car. And that's Cooper Webster around at the, uh, I think that's, at turn five and six, the second chicane. So we'll get a modem simulation replay of that for you so we can understand what has transpired for Cooper Webster. Fighting very hard with Luke Harvey there and down into the braking zone, went down the inside. Little bit of a rub here uh, on the middle of the corner there and possibly just a little bit of uh, net code contact as well. They were rubbing a little bit through that corner as well. So, uh, that's racing though, especially in these bad supercars. These boys are not afraid to hang around and uh, get the panels dirty on each other. And while we look back from Sam Blacklock towards behind to uh, Jake Burton, who's getting very close now. And uh, Brett Lockson still tucked up behind him, just struggling a little bit now, falling off ever so slightly. And you can see that gap from Blacklock to Burton really come down and uh, he's going to be feeling this pressure very shortly. Yeah, he definitely will. Burton's not a slow driver, we know that for a fact, done very, very well for himself in on numerous occasions in Scops and also in the Toyota 86 series and for Aussie driver search in real life. So it's going to be interesting to see how well Blacklock can hold off. We both fairly good drivers, both former teammates as well. So going to be probably no love lost here, that's for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I suspect that that could very well be the case. I don't, uh, I don't mind uh, getting the elbows out a little bit with the uh, ERT boys. It's good to play with your old teammates, but there's always that uh, underlying. And Sam is just locked up there as he goes into the hairpin. He's going to have possibly some time to recover this down the straight. He got a good exit. Obviously, running wider means that you get more momentum on the exit to the corner. He's going to push Jake Burton as they come through the kink there unsettling that car massively and we said that they weren't afraid to have a little bit of a biffo well that's uh evidence as as much as you can show it right there and both of them thankfully though making to see it through the uh other side of that transaction and jake burton is the man that comes out on top so a bit of a a uh a relatively unforced but slightly forced error there for uh sam blacklock and can see he's still got some pace in that car. He does not want to give up that. Patrick Harlow gets uh comes under attack there from Marlon McMullen, or just trying to get the move done but can't quite make it work. And uh, so now Sam Blacklock's just got to sell himself, try and get position back, but also uh, defend from an ever an ever lingering Brett Loxton as well. Yeah, and Loxton's just sitting there. He's not really pushing too hard he's just sitting there just keeping the pace up so he can keep up but then also save tires save fuel and not overdo it and end up costing himself a possible podium should the two ahead of him of blacklock and burton come together at some point which could really throw this championship up that's for sure yeah absolutely but uh two guys that 
may come together if they uh, get much closer than that. James Duckworth and Tyson Williams having a little bit of a scrap further back in this field. And Duckworth just struggling to get the traction down as he came out of that chicane there. And it's going to be a bit of a tragedy here. And that trick sims for, I think that Scott Soloski might get caught up in that as well. And that is, uh, yeah, that's an interesting incident. Have to get a uh, modem simulation replay to really have a bit of a better look at that one. So a little bit of racing as they uh, came through this chicane here. And as I said, James Duckworth didn't get the best exit here. Now he goes to defend the right-hand side. Tyson Williams goes along with him. They've also got Scott Soloski there. So it's a bit clumsy from both of those guys. And uh, an unfortunate spot on the track for that to happen. Luckily, though, they're both able to continue. And Scott Soloski, he looks like he was traveling pretty slowly. So I think that he was clearing a slowdown. Those guys are coming in absolutely hot. And, uh, they've all met in the middle, and it's been very awkward for all three of those drivers. So probably, uh, yeah, something for them all to keep in mind for uh, another event. At the moment, though, Marlon McMullen continuing to charge his way through this field, and he's got some great pace in that car at the moment. He's caught up to Ethan Warren, who's been sitting a little bit in no man's land for a while in sixth position. Looks like he's missing a little bit of the front of that Holland Commodore of his and could possibly be losing a little bit of pace because of that. Ethan Warren has been considerably slower than uh, the cars up ahead of him the last couple of laps, and he it's been close to half a second a lap to McMullen for the last couple of rotations as well. And he's looking very strong as they come down the straight here. And you can see that oh, that yes. Ash is going on the ground. He's going to go down for a move down the inside. He's going to just pull it up. He might get a little bit of a rub on the exit here. But uh, I want to think that the damage on that car is just killing his straight line speed. And he's going to squeeze Jackson Suslin Harlow to the outside of the track as well. And Ethan lost it. He's lost it coming in. And uh, I don't know if Jackson Suslin Harlow went off there kind of in a... Well, or if he was taking some evasive action there. Both of them have managed it. And, uh, uh, and they'll continue on. But Ethan Warren has to clear his slowdown. He dives out of the way as to not get a black flag. And uh, it just goes from bad to worse. Or in there. Yeah, actually looked like Jackson was break, having a break on the grass there from getting squeezed by Ethan there. So did really, really well to actually pull it up and not go too far off the road when in a turn one. So really, really good driving there from the youngster. But yeah, really unfortunate for Ethan Warren as he's dropped well and truly down the order now. He's just behind Andrew Gilliam. So sitting in pretty much limited position at this point. We look up uh, towards the lead of the uh, field because in this little four-car train now, a man who's been plugging away very si silently but uh, in a very aggressive manner is Brady Myers because he has been catching the group up ahead of him at close to three-tenths of a second per lap. And uh, Dane Warren as well, out the front of this field, his last lap uh, was very uh, fast compared to the one that he did before. I think he got a slowdown on the lap previously and uh, he's now picked up the pace but Brady Myers has picked it up even harder. He's so currently the fastest car on track. We're just getting a replay of uh, Andrew and Ethan Warren as they came in to the final chicane and Andrew having to take to the outside and cutting across the asphalt turf on the inside of that chicane there. But yeah, up this front of this pack, he, he's really been plugging away, putting the laps down, and he's caught this cap, this pack quite dramatically, and it seems like he's got good pace in that car. I would be interested to see if, um, I think he would be really, I mean, I know he's got good car speed in that car at the moment, but we've seen how well the undercut works in these V8 supercars as he's just trying to push it to the limits at the moment. Um, and it is early to pit, but uh, I think a couple of guys might think about pitting now to get themselves out of traffic. And I think with the pace that Brady Myers has been showing over his competitors, and the mobile by side with... Oh, oh, there's contact as they come down the straight. 
and that is very lucky that they both managed to come to, uh, to terms with that. Brett Loxton, though, he didn't look like he'd come to terms with that very well. He darted right back behind. That TTL Esports car might even look to push him through that final chicane there. Both of uh, them managed to come out the other side. Still looking forward and uh, in for the fourth or fifth, but the other way around. And oh. I think that Brett Loxton is not very happy about what's just happened there uh, because he is really trying to uh, get a little bit of a, a, an overlap with the TTL Esports machine. We will get a modem simulation replay of that for you so we can just understand. And that's what I saw before. He cut in very tightly uh, behind that. So, let's see what happened here. So, a little bit of a rub on both ends for Brett Loxton there. And they had a little bit of a rub. And, I mean, I don't think Brady really could have been more further to the right there. And he definitely had enough overlap. So, I'm not entirely sure what uh what brett loxton is uh kind of carrying on about there but uh you know he doesn't have the benefit of seeing a replay like we do and uh it is kind of entertaining entertaining to uh to see that kind of driving in a sense so we'll let him plug away and uh hopefully he he can catch back up to the head of this train which is still led at the moment by jake burr after he managed to get through on Sam Blacklock, but Dane Warren still has a commanding lead at this stage. It's uh, grown out to now just about four seconds as they come across the line at the moment. He's been pulling about a second, uh, uh, pardon me, not a second, but about a tenth. And Brett Loxton is going to pit early. So just as I was talking about coming in for the early pit and, uh, and going for a bit of an undercut, Brett Loxton has decided that he's going to do it. And Sam Blacklock has unfortunately had to slow down through the final chicane. And he will be moving himself to the back of that field. Now, this is very good for Brett Loxton, who's just come into the pits. He's effectively just gained... Uh, I mean, everyone's effectively just gained quite a bit of time on Sam. But he's done probably even more so than others by being in that pit lane at the moment. Not the... Logitech G Alta C Sports card down on the pit lane as well. Was Danell having a look at Luke Harvey, who's uh, being followed closely by Brian Borg in the Premier Esports Racing Team car, who's uh, had, had a bit of a quiet race so far. Although uh, Brian Borg actually up seven positions at the moment, so hasn't been too quiet for uh, Brian Borg there. And just noticed as well on my timing that. Uh, did Chris Coxhead drop out of the uh, uh, event earlier in the race? As we did Scott Slosky as well, who's obviously suffered some uh, some damage from that incident that we saw just a couple of laps ago. Luke Harvey, though, is still continuing around. Front end of that Ford Falcon there, looking a little askew. A little bit of a... Uh, uh, I don't know. Kind of a, a sideward grin to that car. As he comes down into the hairpin now. And uh, Brian Borg, we've seen very aggressive race that uh, Luke doesn't mind getting the elbows out at all and it'll be interesting to see how these guys battle on very shortly and something's happened to Andrew Gilliam I think we're just having a oh and that was Tyson Williams into the uh into the pit wall there or into the wall champion it's hard to so this is Chris Coxhead from earlier and Scott Soloski so they're all oh right okay yes well that'll do it ladies and gentlemen I think that's the, a miscommunication there between someone who was coming into the pits and someone who was not now we saw this yesterday in the split two race with uh Ross Rizzo being collected from the lead of the race uh, by, I think it was a TTR car. This has to be one of the most treacherous pit entries because it's essentially in the braking zone to the final chicane and you can go about 100, 100 odd metres deeper if you want to go into the pit lane and so uh, the speed difference in the braking zone can be extremely immense and we've seen quite a few people get caught out by that over the many times that we have come to this track and uh, unfortunately there for Scott Soloski and Andrew Gilliam, they, they can't be a bit of a mistake into the chicane and that's going to give Brian Borg all the invitation that he needs to have a little bit of a look. And I suspect there'll be a move down into the hairpin here. Luke Harvey, though, 
giving as little room as is required and uh, possibly just shunning Ryan Borg out of uh, contention for a move there. But uh, very nicely placed by uh, Luke Harvey there in the Ace Tennis Cup. Yeah, really, really good driving there. So we've now got Dane Warren and to pretty much react to the rest of the field and just to actually note on those recent pit stops, Brady Myers has jumped ahead of Jake Burton, so effectively second in this race, although Burton's quite far on his heels, but that was very close pit entry for Brian Bork there on uh, Luke Harvey, nearly contact, but luckily managed to pull it up. Yeah, so um, Brady's, as we said, he had fantastic pace in that car, so he's done the exact opposite of what I thought he should do, and uh, he's going to actually possibly even uh, jump quite. So pretty, pretty close, but um, Brady does not quite come out your race leader. So he's um, he's come into the pits and he's come out just ahead of Jake Burton. And he's had great pace in that car. So I would not be uh, expecting that Jake Burton will be sitting on the rear of that TTL Esports machine for much longer because I think that is uh, probably going to go hunting after Mr. Dane Warren who's now, uh, has to be said, definitely not four to five seconds ahead like he was previously. That gap looks considerably less than what it was before that pit stop cycle. So we'll uh, have to see how it all pans out in the next few laps. But what can be said is that Brady Myers was three seconds faster in the lane uh, than Dane Warren and uh, 2.6 seconds faster in the stop. So either considerably less fuel there for uh, Brady Myers or uh, possibly a longer stop there for Dane. And uh, have to see towards the end of this race how it all comes out. Dane Warren dealing with a little bit of traffic though at the moment. He's got Mario Vlasic just up ahead of him. And this could be uh, a little bit awkward for his race. Those two cars, thankfully for him, diving off into the pit lane and you could see how much more speed those cars could carry compared to Dane as he uh, was braking to make the apex for that corner. Sam Blacklock, one of the few drivers now who has not pitted. In fact, he is the only car yet to pit. So not many cars choosing to go beyond the halfway distance of this motor race to come into the pit and Jake Burton continues to apply pressure to Brady Myers, who's uh, looking strong but not pulling away just. Yeah, Brady's doing a really, really good job at holding off Burton at this stage. And the thing to remember is he was actually pretty much in the middle slash rear of that battle pack between himself, Burton, Warren, and also Blacklock. So he's probably saved a little bit more fuel than Dane, who was leading that pack and has burnt probably a bit more fuel. So. The obvious thing that he's been a little bit quicker in the stop is of no surprise, but I'd hazard a guess Dane's probably going to have this one in the bag, although this will definitely help Brady in the championship because it'll just help keep that gap as close as possible to, to him. Absolutely right, and uh, as we said, Brady Myers did need to elevate himself to another level to keep his championship hopes alive. Definitely better than the fifth place that uh, he was sitting in when we were talking about that last time. So he's obviously been listening into the here in the commentary booth and has uh, decided to up his game. And he is doing a good job of that as it stands. Sam Blacklock has finally made his way into the pit lane as uh, his teammate flies by him down into turn one. And I suspect that all these cars, but possibly Brett Locks, will probably come out ahead of Mr. Blacklock there, but looks like Locks did to make it through as well. And uh, Blacklock actually could possibly have. I think he has a stop game. Speeding, I think he surely had a speeding penalty on the entry there. Well, I might go back and, and see if we can clock the speed on his uh, on his entry to pit there, but indeed, and if stop there for and uh, that's very unfortunate for him we were expecting him to come in around black uh, around uh, Boxton there he's come out considerably further back so he wasn't uh, it's, it's kind of hard to say he was doing about 74 as he came across the line there and uh, pit entry is 64 so I think he has probably picked up a speeding violation 
on that one. So very unfortunate for Sam. He's running at the top five and uh, is now going to have to do a little bit more work to get himself back into that. Yeah, absolutely. He's a little bit down the order, but he's on fresh boots. He's got some decent pace, so should be able to move up a few more positions and half at least recover what he's lost in that unfortunate pit stop. He's sitting behind his teammate at the moment, Ethan Warren, and as we've seen, Ethan's uh, to find pace in that car. So he's probably going to get that move done fairly quickly. And, and uh, but then a little bit of a gap up to uh, Andrew Gilliam, a couple of seconds up the road there. So probably get himself back, definitely up into... The, I think he'll be uh, at best probably be able to recover to seventh or eighth. I think eighth is probably the uh, more likely scenario there for Sam. What he can do on some fresh Dunlop rubber, and uh, he is obviously a two-time V8 Supercars Official Series champion, and uh, is no slouch in one of these machines. That has Ethan more in there in the Astro Gaming car, letting Sam in the Logitech G machine. Cooper Webster, uh, another man who's uh, Got some Logitech sponsorship on the side of his car. Been a bit paused though, has his machine in this event and uh, it's just made himself past Brian Bork in the Premier Esports Racing Team entry who was tucked up very closely behind Luke Harvey just previously, who's now a little bit further down the road. So Brian struggling with that car at the moment, but Cooper Webster's been doing a good job recovering after a couple of incidents earlier in this race. He's a he's participated particularly throughout this season. He's had some good results, but he's definitely not in championship contention at the moment. Is Cooper Webster? I think he might have even be sitting dead 30th uh, for the championship at the moment. But he's still been putting on some really good performances throughout this series, and uh, it's a young talent who's really showing what he can do in these V8 supercars, not only in the official series, but uh, in Scops as well. And we can see he's obviously got some damage to that car because Brian Borg has just absolutely dominated him on the straight and uh, makes that job look easy as, as they came into the final chicane there. And uh, they're followed pretty closely as well by Thomas Hins and uh, Greg Sharp, who in plotting away, Thomas Hins has... Uh, very nice delivery on that sim racing channel car as well. I'm sure he'll uh, want to put some moves on a couple of cars so that he, he can uh, get a bit of air time for that one. And uh, always good to see Thomas Hins out on track and circuit. Yeah, but, um, up... No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, Hins is actually doing quite well tonight by the looks of He's started to be second. He's actually up to 16th and... Got some solid pace on the guys ahead of him, so possibly a few more positions incoming at this stage. Yeah, well, you definitely wouldn't, uh, you definitely wouldn't say no to Thomas Hins. We've seen him do very well in all forms of uh, of four wheel racing, not just in the V8 supercars. Very handy in the GT car also. And uh, just looking at Greg Sharp, who sits behind Thomas Hins at the moment as they come down into the hairpin there. And he is starting to close a little bit on to Cooper Webster. They're just a little bit deep into the corner for Thomas Hins there. We'll see if he has the same straight line advantage that we saw Brian Bork have on the previous circuit of this track. It does look like a little bit of front end damage to that Sim Racing Channel car. And he is definitely closing up big time as they come into the braking zone, but he was just a little bit far back at that hairpin exit to uh, make anything work towards the end there. So Thomas Hins hopefully can set himself up for the next lap. And uh, I dare say that he's, if he's uh, within a car length or so of Cooper Webster as they come out of that hairpin, he's not really going to uh, be able to do much about being overtaken by Thomas Hins. And he's got Greg Sharp, another veteran of this series to uh, worry about as well. Let's try to have a look through the uh, battle packs at the moment. This is probably the tightest pack of cars that we have on track at the moment, with uh, the exception of our uh, places for second and third. And also, we've got this battle for Andrew Gilliam and Sam Blacklock, which will uh, 
be heating up very shortly. I wonder if uh, Sam Blacklock's had just a slowdown there as well because he's had to drop back once again. So we've talked a lot about these slowdowns. We've seen a lot of drivers suffering from them. And um, it's, it's definitely one of the talking points that we've seen at this track with this car. I remember even last time we were here, we saw so many drivers having similar incidents and Job Stewart has had a big incident. That looks like front and rear contact and uh, I suspect the Wall of Champions has uh, bitten another customer there. He's actually not hit the Wall of Champions. He's lost the uh, rear of the car as he came through the second apex there and has spun to the inside wall there. Good to see a uh, modem simulation replay of that and very unfortunate for that driver. But meanwhile, Thomas Hins continuing to pursue Cooper Webster in the Evolution Racing Team machine, but uh, still not quite able to get there. And I'm sure that uh, Cooper Webster's struggling in the straight line in that Holden Commodore there, but he's still very fast in the corners and he definitely knows how to pilot one of these machines very well indeed. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, really close between those two, but just seems to maybe have a little bit of an edge over Hensy at the moment. It's looking like Hensy's a bit quicker about, well, not quite a tenth, but about four thousandths of a second quicker than last, last time by on that lap. So it's fairly close between those two, but I imagine Hensy should be able to just think about it in a conservative way and just eventually just bot away and get the position in the end. Yeah, I think that uh, will probably be the case. Meanwhile, up at the front, uh, or up towards the rear of the top 10 here, Andrew Gilliam and Jack Boyd coming together on track and uh, looking to get involved in a little bit of a battle here. Andrew Gilliam has been pursuing Jack Boyd for the last couple of laps and has been closing in at uh, nearly six tenths it was the last time they came round, and uh, as they crossed the line this time by, it was another uh, four tenths of a second that Andrew Gilliam has put onto Jack Boyd. So he's going to uh, now have to find a way past, and this could open up a little bit of an opportunity for Sam Blacklock, who uh, needed to catch it back up to Gilliam as well. These guys now coming through turn number four, trying to stay to the right and as close to the wall as you possibly can. Then down into this very tricky section here. Very sharp right, uh, left, and then a, a, a right which extends outwards, but it's kind of so flat on the camber, it's very difficult to get the traction down. And now Brady Myers is going defensive, and there's a little bit of a bump there from Jake Burton and that's actually going to help out Brady Myers quite considerably because uh, he was being rubbed just a moment ago and now he's got uh, about five or six car lengths over Jake Burton there. So we'll uh, go back to, to Andrew Gilliam who's looking a bit too deep on the brakes and we have seen as well that Sam Blacklock has reigned in that gap which was about two seconds. He's managed to recover that very quickly with these guys battling and Andrew Gilliam now Looking very menacing in his pursuit sim sports car as they come down the back straight here at Circus Gilles Villeneuve. He's not able to go down into the finals to gain great traction on the exit of that corner though and good mid-corner speed, but it's Sam Blacklock had the best of them oh, all. Surely not, he's gonna knock them oh. through there, no! And Sam Blacklock has gone spinning to the inside of turn number one, he's managed to actually get back on the track. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, he spun it into the wall, and it is a night to forget once again for Sam Blacklock. And he's just managing to get the car back on track, but it's a very awkward spot to be for the Altus Esports drive. We'll get a modem simulation replay of that for you. So we just see these two guys up ahead of him battling. And he got such good momentum coming out of that final corner. Kind of boxed himself in with Gall uh, Gilliam on the left-hand side there, but probably uh, not enough room for him to move down the inside there. Possibly could have used a little uh, a bit of patience there. And unfortunately, spinning, trying to recover, presumably, after uh, really putting quite a lot of heat and energy into those tyres trying to get past those two drivers. So very unfortunate for Sam Blacklock. He'll uh, 
walk away and look back to come look to come back another day with a better result. Meanwhile, going back to Cooper Webster, Thomasin's looking a little bit closer this time by. Just needs to nail this braking zone and get some good traction. Cooper Webster's made a little bit of a mistake there in the mid corner, a little bit of understeer. And now Thomas Hins has got a much better run. And I think this could be it for Hinsey. He's got the momentum coming up. It's closing, closing, closing. Is he gonna pull out? He is. He's finally got the momentum coming down under the bridge. And Cooper Webster is going to have to admit defeat on that one. Nice, healthy amount of curve there from Hins as he comes through the final chicane and has finally gotten that position sorted out. Now Greg Sharp in the Stealth Sim, Sim Sports car having a look on young Cooper Webster in the RT machine. And Cooper Webster uh, seemingly has just parted ways with, uh, with the uh, laws of physics there. And I think that he may have decided to uh, pull over and the, the, possibly the damage to his vehicle was uh, just a little bit too frustrating for him there. So unfortunate to see Cooper out of this race, but the uh, battle for the final spot on the podium, the uh, final two spots on the podium, is uh, starting to spice up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's still been going on since pretty much the beginning of this race. Well, since the pit stops, more or less, between Brady Myers and Jake Burton, I believe that Dane's just done the quickest time by the last lap, so it's gonna be interesting to see whether Brady can possibly catch Dane it's probably gonna be a hard ask but if these two can just work together they might be able to catch Dane by the end of the race yeah I think they probably it does seem like um, they're probably not worrying about what Dane's doing at the moment I think these guys are very involved in their battle here I think Brady's probably looking in the mirrors a little more than he's looking up ahead and uh, worrying about where Dane Warren is and uh, Jake Burton is just looking to psych out Brady Myers in any which way he can try and open up a door to uh, second position. Mitchell McLeod battling with Damien Johnston in uh, one of the Gone Rogue Motorsports machines. Little bit uneasy on the exit there. Mitchell McLeod using every little micrometer of space to uh, try and get past that machine but not able to do so carrying good straight line speed is that gone rogue motorsports car and uh damien johnston will retain that position for the time being and mitchell mcleod started this race 25th up into 20th possibly hasn't moved uh, up through the field as much as i thought we might see but um as i said so many drivers in practice from yesterday's race it's not um surprising to see so many of these guys with absolutely astounding pace and uh this battle up at the front jake burton using a very very aggressive amount of curb as he comes through the uh final chicane and it is very easy as we've seen so many times throughout this race to be picking up a uh, a slowdown in that chicane if you just cut it a couple of centimeters too close it's all over and mitchell mcleod now has a run He's gonna have to go around the outside of the hairpin. I suspect that he'll probably uh, go a little wide and go for a nicer, tighter exit, with a bit of a straighter uh, trajectory so that he can really get that 600 horsepower of his V8 down to the ground. And he's done a great job of that. He's gonna to pull to the outside now. Damien Johnston's going to have the inside line, which is preferred, but Mitchell McLeod has the speed down the straight and he's gonna to have to be very committed on the brakes. He is and he cuts across the uh, Gone Rogue Motorsports machine and takes away 90th position from Damien Johnston in a very commanding fashion there. Great move from Mitchell McLeod. And uh, this battle up in front of the field, still very close, but uh, Burton's just edged back a little bit in uh, in the last couple of corners there. Still looking very, uh, very close, but um, Good to see as well that uh, Aussie Driver Search not only decided to uh, sponsor the official series, but also sponsor uh, one of their obviously participating drivers in uh, in Jake Burton. And great to see that Jake will be getting a run uh, once again in the A in the GT86 uh, series this year. 
um, alongside another sim racer, Ethan Grigg Golt, who's going to be participating with Aussie Driver Search in that series as well. And uh, if you'd like to get yourself into an Aussie Driver Search car, there are there are two ways that you can do so. You can either win the Aussie Driver Search iRacing Official V8 Supercars Championship, or you can uh, jump online and have a look at some of the packages that they have. Now, I'm pretty sure that they're all sold out for this year. I could be wrong. The only way to find out is to uh, go and check it out. But uh, having been through the program myself, I can tell you it's an absolutely amazing experience and uh, one that I thankfully will be, I thankfully will be uh, taking up again. And uh, it's been a fantastic been a fantastic program to us partner up with sim racing as we've seen how so well sim racers can do when they jump behind the wheel of a real racing car so we do appreciate aussie driver search uh, for partnering up with the official iRacing racing v8 supercar series and uh, we encourage you to go and check out their packages if you'd like to get behind the wheel of one of their cars as well meanwhile luke harvey continues to uh battle on with Corey Preston, who's had a little bit of a quiet race uh, comparatively to uh, what we would normally see from Corey, but he's up a couple of positions, so he can't be disappointed with that. And uh, looking to battle with Luke, who uh, I'm sure they have battled many times on track together as they have uh, participated in so many races together. Haven't, uh, haven't seen them dueling on track for a while, though, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what they'll be able to do with each other here. Corey Preston probably not carrying as much pace this round as we would expect. We've seen him be particularly quick at some tracks throughout these uh, these official seasons, but some, some tracks as well, he's just not quite hitting the mark um, in terms of pace, but then he's actually able to finish the races. So it seems like when he's he's got the pace, he can't finish the races. But um, when, the, when the pace isn't quite up at the pointy end of the field, he is able to, to bring the car home. So, um, see if Preston are able to bring this one home. And that's a sad looking Altus Esports car. And uh, it looks like Mitchell McLeod has reined that in fairly quickly after uh, getting past Tyler Blackburn and Damian Johnston. And looks like another position for Mitchell McLeod. So while it's taken him 28 odd laps, he has finally made up a few more positions in the very late stages of this race has Mitchell McLeod. And I dare say with uh, just a couple of laps to go and the state of that uh, LTC Sports machine that Mitchell McLeod will be moving his way past Sam Blacklock. Uh, unfortunately, neither of these guys really in championship contention, but uh, both very active in the uh, V8 Supercar Official Series is Brady Myers. Bit of a mistake, and that could open up. Is that a slowdown? It was very, very close to being a slowdown if it wasn't, but a little bit of a lockup into the final chicane. And with two laps to go now, Jake Burton's been there or thereabouts for such a long time. I wonder if the pressure's just starting to get Brady a little bit as uh, Jake's really starting to push some of these moves a little close on the rear bumper of that TTL Esports car. Yeah, looked like Brady just touched the grass on the outside into the brake zone of that final chicane there, and it just unsettled the car a little bit too much. Burns still been hounding that the rear end of that TTL Esports car. He's not given up at all since the pit stops, and it's going to be a very, very close race to the finish, I reckon. And whoever comes out on top is going to have done very, very well regardless of the outcome. Yeah, well... Uh... Brady obviously started a little bit further down the field than uh, was actually just started behind Jake, so he would uh, be doing ever so slightly better. Jack Boyd had an incident, looks like, with uh, Andrew Gilliam, who was recovering from a slowdown, and, oh, that's an awkward one from, uh, from both of those guys. Probably, I'd say, a little bit unnecessary. Uh, yeah. Well, let you uh, let you at home judge for yourselves what you thought of that one. Andrew Gilliam there clearing a slowdown, and uh, Jack Boyd. My, meanwhile, uh, it's on for position number two in this race because he's oh, in the wall of champions, and luckily he's championed through and has recovered. Uh, wonder if he's got any damage to the watts linkage on that car. It was a fairly uh, 
fairly aggressive rear hit there. We'll get a replay, modem simulation replay of that for you. See, uh, got some good speed coming down the back straight there on the outside. See what happened here. Ran it nicely and just, yeah, just car got pretty unsettled. He probably just overcorrected ever so slightly in the middle of that. It's not, uh, not surprising he went for such a big save on that though, up on two wheels. And, uh, and feeling a slide like that is never going to uh, feel good. Meanwhile, Luke Harvey, Corey Preston still battling on. Corey Preston very close to the rear of that ace tennis car now as they come through turn number two and up the hill. Very difficult section of the track to uh, get the power down there. And Luke Harvey doing a great job of doing so, just pulling ever so gently ahead of the uh, JMSR racing car there and Corey Preston's just tapped the wall uh as I was saying that very easy to just carry a little bit of uh understeer through that corner with the lock differentials in this car and uh he's just tapped the outside wall there Jake Burton has not had the momentum that he had last time around to get himself up on a Brady Myers and as they come across the line in just a couple of hundred meters time He's only going to have one more revolution of this circuit to get the job done. Looks like he'll be walking away with a podium nonetheless, but he wants to be the man behind the leader. And looks like he's not carrying any damage to that car. He's still able to maintain pace behind Brady here. So it's going to come down to uh, if Brady can keep it all together for this final lap. He's kept it alive for the last 30 laps. So I can't see why... He's not going to keep it together on this one. He's just got to hit all of his marks for a couple more kilometers and he will bring it home in position number two. Jake Burton is not going to let him forget that he's there though. Running a little bit deep into turn number four there or turn number five and Jake Burton using up every little bit of the track there. Getting the left hand tire onto the grass down the straight and just clipping the outside grass there. Managing to keep it all under control though. Nice and smooth through the chicane for both of them there. Brady Myers still looking very strong. And unless there's a big late lunge here down into the chicane, I suspect that uh, Brady's gonna have it all done. And it looks like Jake Burton is going to have a little bit of a drift special coming out of uh, that hairpin there. But a man who has driven flawlessly all race and albeit with a little bit of a slow hit stop uh, has managed to maintain the race lead throughout this entire event and he shows off a little bit with a little bit of a drift in his Logitech G Alta C Sports machine. It's Dane Warren who takes out round number 11 at Circuit Giles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. J uh, Jake Burton will come home position number three behind Brady Myers who did a fantastic job to defend from Jake there. Uh, Brett Loxton Ended up a little bit in no man's land, but ended up fourth position. And it looks like Marlon McMullen was pretty happy with a fifth position there. TTL Esports will have two cars in uh, the top 10 this evening with Jackson Susan Harley coming in fifth. It's not done between Byron Borg and Corey Preston, though, into the oh, final so corner. So and Romy, oh, oh, Corey Preston, great job to keep the car there. And uh, great job for both of those guys to uh, come through the other side very tight chicane at the end of this lap here in Montreal. We'll get a modem simulation replay of that because that was definitely worth seeing between those two drivers. So Corey Preston for JSMR Racing goes to the outside. Brian Borg for Premier Esports Racing Team on the inside there. And Corey Preston turns in just late enough to uh, pick up a little bit of a double tap on that curb there and uh, rocket his way into position number 12 and uh sam blacklock i'm just gonna keep with the replay now because sam blacklock lost a uh, position before the end of the race as well i have to say if he's run out of fuel coming across the line there it does look like he's uh run out of fuel as he's coming across the line and uh tried to get it over and just luckily for himself only <laughs> only uh lost one position to Mitchell McLeod there. So uh, few uh, few incidents throughout this evening, but it was uh, not uh, as dramatic for some as it was for others. Those slowdowns really affecting 
a good portion of the drivers this evening. But it was Dane Warren for the Logitech G Altus Esports who took home round number 11 here at Circus Charles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. He's followed up by Brady Myers, five and a half seconds close to further down the road. Jake Burton came in very closely behind him as well, let off on the uh, last lap. Rhett Loxton came home in fourth position. Marlon McMullen worked his way up into fifth. Jackson Susan Harlow for TTL Esports came home in sixth position. Bit of a quiet uh, evening in terms of camera time for James Scott, but he brought his Evolution Racing Team machine home in seventh. Andrew Gilliam uh, continues a streak of good performances by coming home with a top 10 in eighth. Ethan Warren in the Astro Gaming Altus Esports car came home in ninth position and Jack Boyd for Gone Rogue Motorsports rounded out the top 10. In 11th, we have Luke Harvey followed by Corey Preston who just edged Brian Borg through that final chicane to take Twyth over Brian Borg in 13th. Thomas Hins will hold on to 14th in the end. 15th, Michael Taliansic in 16th. Mario Vlasic cracked up. Mitchell McLeod 17th and 18th. 19th, Sutton Black Clock, unfortunately, after what appeared to be running out of fuel, possibly a slowdown. Tyler Blackburn running out the field and then the rest of the finishers, Damien Johnson, Kirsten Smart, Luke Page, James Duckworth, Zach Baker, Cooper Webster, Job Stewart, Tyson Williams, uh, Scott Soslowski, Chris Coxed and James McKee. Well, that rounds out our 31 car field for the race here. Round number 11 at Circus Charles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. We thank you so much for joining us on the iRacing Esports Network. Did you enjoy the racing tonight? I know I did, and uh, it's always good here on the Monday nights. If you thought the racing was pretty good, give us a big fat subscribe on the iRacing Esports Network. If you wouldn't mind heading over to SimSpeed TV as well uh, and giving us a subscribe there, that would also be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to leave a like on this video as well. We uh, do thank you so much for joining us here on the iRacing Esports Network for round number 11 of the Aussie Driver Search iRacing V8 Supercar Official Series. Thank you very much once again to Cameron Dance and to Jake Kennedy up in the TV booth for bringing us all the fantastic pictures that you saw this evening. Uh, and there is plenty of action still to come up, Cameron, and uh, I'd appreciate if you would help me out here because I currently do not have access to my mouse and cannot see what fantastic action we have coming up on the network later in the week, but there definitely is some great action coming up. Yeah, absolutely. There's plenty of action coming up on Wednesday on the Summer Speed Esports Network. We've got the final round of the Rallycross at Iowa Speedway, which will be very interesting to watch. And then shortly after that, we've got the Sprint Series Australia from Nürburgring. Thursday, we've got the final round of the Oceanic Sim Racing Formula 3 Championship from Laguna Seca. It's fairly close to the title fight, so it'll be very, very interesting to see how that goes. Friday, we've got the Australian Online Supercar Championship at Amala Ford, the 650, one of the other Enduros this season in the championship. Saturday, we have the Majors Series. Don't action. Oh, that's right. Sebring two hour with the Camel GT cars. And then next Monday is the final round of season two for the official iRacing V8 Supercar Series at Amala. So going to be very, very action-packed week and going to be very exciting. Yes, there is no shortage of sim racing here on SimSpeed TV and on the iRacing Esports Network. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so much for joining us. We have enjoyed thoroughly bringing you tonight's entertainment. We will be back next week for the Aussie Driver Search iRacing V8 Supercars official series on Monday evening. We look forward to your company then. And until then, stay well. Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rhythm. Uh, both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Off the field's going to get rolled. This is very close. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. God, what?